Welcome back to the Stroud Route 66 Coliseum, this Class B Area 2 Boys Championship game. Tom Nelson, Adam Diesel Horse will bring it to you as the Lomega Raiders will take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Lomega 21 and 3 on the season, ranked number 4 in Class B. Pittsburgh 17 and 4, ranked number 18 in Class B in that final uh, poll back in late January. Pittsburgh got here by beating Graham Dustin 49 to 22 in districts, then knocked off Welch 58 to 32, and Red Oak, number five ranked team in the state, 41 to 35 in the regional. Lomega beat Carney 69 to 20 in Dover 77 32 in district, then beat Wesley and Christian 71 to 42, and Glencoe 66 to 53 to punch their ticket to this area winners bracket championship game. Starting lineup for Jim Jensen's Pittsburgh Panthers. Cole Allen's a 6'3 sophomore. Averaging 18 points and four rebounds a game. 6'2 junior Carter Cross averages 12 points and grabs seven boards a contest. 5'10 sophomore Matthew Rice averages 13 points and six rebounds a game. 5'8 senior Colton Scott averages three points and three rebounds a game. And Parker Horton, a 6'2 sophomore, averaging 11 points and six rebounds a game. For Low Mega, senior Riley Lumpkin averages 14 points and grabs seven boards a contest. Senior Hector Rivera averages two points and four steals a game. Senior Noah Snowden averages a team-high 20 points and grabs eight rebounds a game. Junior Blake Snowden averages 12 points and four rebounds a game. And senior Dylan Fisher averages six points and eight rebounds per contest for Justin Edsel's Lomega Raiders. So if it's Lumpkin, Rivera, Snowden, Snowden, and Fisher for, Lo- for the Raiders, it's Allen, Cross, Rice, Scott, and Horton for the Panthers. Last time that Pittsburgh made it to state, they lost in the semis way back in 2002. Lomega's last trip in 2012 lost in the semis to Forgan. Opening tip is controlled by Pittsburgh. The road blue uniforms, black numbers trimmed in white. Lomega the home whites with blue numbers trimmed in black. So glad to have you with us from Stroud tonight. The Lomega Lady Raiders have knocked off Pittsburgh already in our first game. And a foul underneath as they work it into Parker Horton. And he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two here off the bat. And the foul on Noah Snowden is his first. Well, that's the one guy you want to keep out of foul trouble if you're Lomega. And that was really kind of a silly foul. Parker Horton had a... Team high 17 in their win over Red Oak the other night. Coach loves his work ethic. Free throw up and in the second opportunity, one for two. But the offensive rebound, the shot left side missed by Carter Cross and another opportunity, but on that baseline, Cole Allen stepped on it. So 30 seconds in, one to nothing Pittsburgh. If you're just joining us, we talked about it in the first game. Pittsburgh, small town located just south of McAllister in southeast Oklahoma. Matter of fact, Stroud's probably about halfway for these two squads. Lomega coming from the west and Pittsburgh coming from the south and east. How would you explain Lomega on the map? Lomega in the wild plains of (laughs) western Kingfisher (laughs) County where the wind blows a lot. I wanted to hear that. What's your... Turn right at the grain elevator. That's right? exactly <laughs> right. North. Head west out of Kingfisher, turn right at the elevator. <laughs> what a great community. And a great go, school. Go north and don't miss it on your way by. Turnover. Good take. Out, out there between Loyal and Omega. Foul on Cole Allen will be his first. Lomega won a state championship back in uh, 2001, which would have been the year before. Pittsburgh made it to state for the first time. Riley Lumpkin will score. Boy, good take there. Lumpkin with a strong move. See Lomega bringing some zone pressure. Foul on the backcourt. Hector Rivera will pick it up. Aggressive defensive player, Rivera. Averages almost four steals a contest for this lady, for this uh, Raider team. <laughs> of course, Kevin Llewellyn sitting over there on Justin Edsel's bench. Got his job done earlier as his girls will go back to state. Try to defend that championship. Long three-pointer. Missing way long by Colton Scott. 
One to nothing almost two minutes in. Actually, two to one, excuse me. Lomega with the uh, one-point lead. Offensive rebound and the follow up and in. That's Dylan Fisher. And Lomega on top early, four to one. You know, one thing I always like when I watch these matchups of the Eastern Oklahoma schools versus Western, you have a lot of contrast of styles. You see a lot more man defense in Eastern Oklahoma. It's not uncommon to see more zone-type defense, and that's what you've seen in both of these games. Another offensive rebound leads to another offensive opportunity that comes up empty for Pittsburgh. That long three missed by Carter Cross. Noah Snowden in the lane. Shot was blocked. That's Cross slapping it back at him. Coast to coast the other way, all the way to the cup. The shot missed by Matthew Rice. Empty trip. Here comes Lomega. Couple of teams who have not been to state in a while. A lot on the line tonight. Tie up on the baseline. It will stay on this end. That's the old adage, Tom, where not to put the ball above your head, right, Chinnett? Exactly right. Loser of this game will take on Red Oak tomorrow. Red Oak was a 50 to 39 winner over Glencoe this afternoon. Now the Pittsburgh girls will take on Weber's Falls. They beat Red Oak 37-25 earlier today. Of course, in Oklahoma State High School basketball, you get that second opportunity after you lose a game to punch your ticket to state. There's a three-pointer that rims off. No good by Blake Snowden. Five minutes to play in the first quarter. Raiders on top, 4-1. to one. Three in the corner is knocked down. That's Cole Allen. And our first tie of the ball game at four. That Lumpkin is fouled out high. It's going to be tough for anyone to stay in front of Lumpkin off the dribble that far out on the perimeter. You might want to give him maybe st step back a couple steps and give him a little bit of space. Matthew Rice, the foul on him, it's his first. Lumpkin right side into the corner, finding Blake Snowden. Back out high to Riley Lumpkin. Nice look. Nice look inside. The shot blocked and the foul on Cole Allen. He just picked up his second foul. A couple of free throws are coming for Blake Snowden. And as you can expect, Coach, uh, Coach Jensen was not happy about that last, uh, last play there. Obviously getting two fouls on one of his better players and just a silly foul, you know, not paying attention. Missed them both. We stay tied at four, just shy of halfway through the first quarter from Stroud tonight. Route 66 Coliseum. One of my favorite places to broadcast from. Deep three-pointer left side is short for Carter Cross. Ahead to Riley Lumpkin. He gathers, he shoots a little short, and the rebound is cleared underneath. That's Matthew Rice with the board. One of my favorite places because, one, it's a beautiful facility. You get to sit down here on the floor. Got a great feel. The music's good, and the people who work here are great. Oh, no doubt. Great hospitality. Here in Stroud, that's why they host tournaments every year. This year, Class B gets it. You know, it's like you said too. It's a great, it's a great place for an area tournament for small schools because it's, it's easy to get to. You know. Yeah, on the east side, it's kind of right in the middle of the state yep. on the eastern half of the state. Three pointer right side. That one no good by Kelby Ott. Coming off the bench. A little fun fact about Kelby: his dad was one of the better officials in the state of Oklahoma. Until he retired, he decided he didn't want to get yelled at every night. <laughs> I got so tired of it. Not a bad idea. Matthew Rice, right side, cross court left to Carter Cross. Runner on the baseline, a little short for Cole Allen. Follow won't go, and a tap underneath. Oh, that's his third foul. Boy, they're going to get it on Cole Allen. You're exactly right. Oh, no, they called it on Lomega. 15. Oh, you're right. I thought, thought it was going to get him going over the back. I did too. I thought they called it on him also, the way he looked at him. It's on Fisher. And the free throw for Allen is up and in. Noah Snowden back in as Rivera will take a seat for the Raiders. Both these teams come in riding five-game winning streaks. 
Second free throw miss, but the offensive rebound was blocked. Riley Lumpkin with the block. Three misses right side. Rebound is cleared by Parker Horton. Pittsburgh's last loss was to Stewart in the Pitt 8 tournament back on January 23rd. Allen misses. For Lomega, they've won five straight since we saw that last loss to Hennessy in the downtown Enid Basketball Festival. We brought that game to you on Scordle. Lomega 0-3 against ranked teams this season. Pittsburgh is 1-3 against ranked teams. Their only win was that win over number five Red Oak in the regional championship game last Tuesday. Two and a half to play in the first quarter. Pittsburgh leads 5-4 to, to the baseline underneath the Horton. He'll finish. Six straight scored by Pittsburgh to make it seven to four. Lumpkin, runner in the lane, offensive foul. Getting set was Parker Horton and Lumpkin went right into him. Riley picks up his first. So Lomega will set up some pressure in the backcourt. Seven to four, Pittsburgh two minutes to play in the first quarter, two minutes. Oh, Horton, wow. <laughs> Lost the basketball out of bounds, three turnovers for Pittsburgh. I'd like to thank those sponsors as you see them crawling along the uh, bottom right of your screen, including Oklahoma Ag Transports, a great sponsor for Omega Sports whenever we have the Raiders and Lady Raiders. Dan and the crew at Oklahoma Ag Transports and uh, Kingfisher. Got to make sure we give a shout out to Sooner Co-op too. They're exactly big. right. Sooner Co-op and of course High Plains Insurance, oh, yeah. our title sponsor. Danny Geis. I don't. I bet he's here. I mean, are there any bad sponsors? No, nah, there's not. They're all great. <laughs> we can't do it without them. No, em. we really can't. Thank you. Whoa, all. that one was almost coming into my lap. Pull up in the lane. Little ten footer is good for Matthew Rice. Nine to four, eight straight scored by the Panthers. Scanning the crowd across the way, reading the breaks to see if Danny's here, but I know he was aware that we were going to be here tonight. Loves it when his Raiders and Lady Raiders are on the, uh, on the live stream. 15-foot jumper for Dylan Fisher. He's got four to make it nine to six. 105 to play in the first quarter. In the half court, Cole Allen right side picks up his dribble. And around the perimeter left side, Matthew Rice dribbles out high. Rivera's all over him, gets around him, and swings it over to the high right side to Carter Cross. Blake Snowden going for the steal. Now it's loose in the baseline and out of bounds. Fourth Pittsburgh turnover. Lomega yet to turn it over. You see the Lomega student section, the girls who are on their way to the state tournament right behind the Lomega bench to our right. And across the way, you can see it in the background of the camera. And a tie-up, and it will go back to Pittsburgh, which will be the first turnover of the night for Lomega. Final 37 seconds of the first quarter. Matthew Rice left side, waits for teammates. Now back it out. Out high to Carter Cross. Right side to Cole Allen. Allen's fouled out high by Blake Snowden, his first. Team foul number six. So Pittsburgh will be shooting in the bonus after this. Final 24 seconds of the first quarter. Both teams kind of feeling out each other in this area championship game. Nice move inside, but Parker Horton Defended well. Rebound to Noah Snowden. Seven seconds. Long pass ahead to Rivera. Fall away from five. Right side off the window and in. That's Hector Rivera to make it nine to eight. It's a one-point game. Eight minutes in. One quarter down. Pittsburgh by a single point. We'll take a break and be right back. You're watching Playoff Basketball on Scordle, presented by High Plains Insurance. 
At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. Tom Nelson, Adam Dieselhorst back with you in Stroud. One quarter in, a one-point lead for Pittsburgh as they lead the Omega Raiders 9-8. to eight. I was going to check here really quick and see if these teams had any common opponents, and I don't think that they did. Of course, Omega, especially in the era of the pandemic, ending up teams are kind of sticking pretty close to home. Now, Tom, just real quick so we can update people on other Class B girls' scores. Kiowa defeats Varnum 66-52. Lakeba Sickles wins. They don't have it final in our app, but I'm, I've been confirmed through a Lakeba fan that they did win. 45-39 uh, is the final score we have. And then, like we mentioned, Forgan beat Leedy 61-51. So we are punching our tickets to state tonight. And we're going to have a state tournament at the Big House. All games played at the Big House for the first time. Banker right side, Lumpkin. Gives Lomega the lead back at 10 to 9. They led early 2 to 1. In the half court, Matthew Rice. Left side to Carter Cross. Bounce pass left to Rice. Working to the baseline to Horton. Horton cut off, gets it back out high left. Matthew Rice right side to Carter Cross. Handing off to Colton Scott. Scott loses the basketball. Riley Lumpkin picks it up. Right side, Kelby Ott in the wing. Baseline to Noah Snowden off the window and in. Noah's first basket. He averages 20 a game. Well, and he's had he's had his man pinned and had good position, but making it tough in the passing lanes. So the ball pressure they have. So that's big for him to get started if you're Lomega. Lomega scored eight straight. Now leading 12 to nine. 18 foot jumper off the left side of the rim by Matthew Rice. Here come the Raiders. Head up dribble into the half court for Blake Snowden. Angling toward the right wing. Now to the top of the key. Snowden, no oh, bumped and fouled as he goes to the floor. Blake will shoot two at the line. He's 0 for 2 at the line tonight already. That foul will be booked on Colton Scott. It's his first. Got to give a shout out to Chris Morales, my former compadre at my previous broadcasting stop. He is watching us tonight from Long Island, New York. That's wild. Call him Jersey Boy, but now he lives in New York. He made the move after he went back to Jersey. Now he's living on Long Island, just east of New York City. Both free throws missed. Blake Snowden is all for 0 for 4 at the line. So, Chris, we are definitely missing you out in the Midwest out here. You can come back and visit any time, and we'll give you a microphone. Oh, definitely. We'll get you on Squirtle anytime exactly you want. Right. Open invite, Chris. There you go. Horton underneath with a finish. Twelve to eleven. There's an answer for Snowden. Back-to-back -back field goals for him. And, you know, if you're Lomega, you really need to focus on getting the ball inside to him. He has a sizable advantage um, against Pittsburgh. They need to just keep working it into him if they can. Left side, Cole Allen. Skip pass right. Josh Nix in the ball game. Top of the key, Nix. Just traveled. Bounce pass, nice look to Horton. And Horton will get the offensive rebound on the stick back. Parker Horton has seven. They were lucky there because they missed a travel, so. 14 to 13. 517 to play in the first half. The side of the lane, Dylan Fisher, a dribble, kicks it out to the right side. Now a deep three-pointer. Blake Snowden <laughs> knocks it down. He's 0 for 4 from the free throw line, but he knocks down the triple. First make of the night from three-point range for Lomega. And they lead 17 to 13. Oh, well, last one that he put up looked good. It was just a little bit short. Under five to play in the first half. 
Three left side, Allen. Rebound pulled down by Dylan Fisher. Right side to Blake Snowden in the half court. Here come the Raiders trying to add to their four-point lead. Nice look inside. Lumpkin, a little strong in the rebound to Cole Allen. Matthew Rice. Was reading some stuff on Pittsburgh from before the season. Coach Boom. thought he's probably their best player. Now Cole Allen knocks down the triple, his second of the ball game. He's got seven points to make it 17 to 16. As we tick down to halfway through the second quarter, right side Kelby Ott. Top of the key to Dylan Fisher. Holding left side is Lumpkin. Riley to the basket in traffic, and he scores with the right hand. Riley Lumpkin with six. Well, that's going to be difficult when you have that kind of – we talked about that earlier on with Lumpkin. Lumpkin needs to keep attacking the goal like that. Ball deflected out of bounds, and it will stay with Pittsburgh. i got to give a shout-out to uh, Cherokee head boys basketball coach Matt Guffey. He's watching. Watching tonight as his uh, Cherokee Strip Conference brethren trying to punch their ticket to state. We appreciate Coach Guffey watching and tuning in from up in the uh, – well, now his wife Cherokee is a area. his wife is a little Omega grad. Right? Ah, that's right. Yeah. You're exactly right. He's got a little Omega blood in the household. There's an odd looking three pointer missed by Josh Nix. I need to give a shout out to Kyle Marks too, also a graduate of Omega. Got people watching all over the country and maybe even the world tonight as Blake Snowden five for him, 21-16. Glad to have our viewers wherever they may be watching tonight. Glad to have you with us on Scordle.com, LomegaRaiders.tv, the Scordle app. Boy, a scrum and a tie-up. No timeout called by Justin Edsel as Lomega will keep the possession. 2.59 to play in the third quarter. Raiders by five. We'll take a break. You're watching Playoff Basketball on Scordle, brought to you by High Plains Insurance. 2.59 to play in the first half. Lomega by five, 21 to 16. And they've got the basketball coming out of the timeout as they look to get their ticket punch to state for the first time in nine years. It's been longer for Pittsburgh, 2002 for the Panthers. Snowden into the corner. Three look for Blake Snowden. Noah to Blake, and Blake missed the three badly. Rebound to Parker Horton. And now here comes Matthew Rice into the half court. Two and a half to play in the first half. Going to have some guests for you at halftime. Kevin Llewellyn, head coach for the Lady Raiders. We understand that uh, Haley Duffy is going to be coming by as well. Emma. Emma Duffy. Nice. I think we're going to have Coach yes. on during halftime, and Emma's going to sit in and do some color for a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if she knows that yet, but she will find she's, out. She's been hired. Uh, I think Haley was her sister. I think you're right. Yeah. I've been calling games for a long time. <laughs> Maybe she'll come on with us, too. Three right side rattles out. That one missed by Rice. Tie up on the rebound will stay on that end. That's just it. You know when you're pulling out <laughs> names of uh, kids who are probably 30 by now. Yeah. <laughs> Not that Haley is, but that's been happening to me lately. Or you see kids that you called games for coaching. That's yeah. been happening quite a bit. Left elbow jumper. Nothing but twine for Matthew Rice. He's got four. Whoa, what happened to the scoreboard? Whoa, the one on the end is fine, 21-18. The one up high, it's now back to normal. But there for a second, it was not showing any numbers at all. Might have been some kind of uh, East Asian <laughs> dialect. <laughs> We're still awaiting start times on these other games because we uh, obviously started this one early. Because both teams, girls and boys, are playing each other, they didn't make us wait till 8 o'clock. We wanted to get in and get out which would get us back on the road quicker, back to Enid. 119 to play in the first half. The three-point lead for the Raiders. Three for the tie on the wing with a hand in his face. Shot missing by Cole Allen. Good job on by Noah Snowden on the closeout. One minute to play in the first half. Rivera out high. 
Right side finding Dylan Fisher. Right wing to Blake Snowden. Snow to the baseline with ball deflected out of bounds, and it should stay on that end. It will with Lomega. And Riley Lumpkin back into the ball game for Hector Rivera. Dylan Fisher holds right wing. Oh, five count. You got to get rid of that basketball, son. It's good defense there by Pittsburgh. I've only got Lomega for two turnovers, and I think I'm right. It's been a it's really been pretty a, clean first yeah, half. Yeah, it has been. Only five for Pittsburgh. Not, not a lot of fouls either. Yeah. It's been a. If Pittsburgh would get fouled, they would shoot. It'd be the seventh team foul. They would get the bonus, but Lomega not going to get in the bonus this first half. There's a steal. Fisher ahead to Rivera. Rivera to the cup and up and in. Hector Rivera has four. Boy, that was a tough take there by Rivera. Rivera's made two really tough shots. He hit that kind of fadeaway earlier yeah, on. Right. And then he hits this shot, too. Ten to play, first half. Three in the corner for Cole Allen. That'd be big. Brawling oh. off, no good. The rebound to Noah Snowden. Rivera gets it up. No, he didn't, not in time. Oh, but Lomega has a five-point lead at the halftime break, 23-18 to 18 on Pittsburgh. We'll take a break. You're watching Playoff Basketball on Scordo, brought to you by High Plains Insurance. Physical Therapy Central is proud to be keeping you in the game of life. Now for the convenient location in Kingfisher. Get back to the game of life faster with PT Central. For almost a century, Sooner Co-op has been at the heart of the communities they serve. In O'Keene, Fairview, Loyal, Hitchcock, and Homestead, Sooner Co-op has been a big part of the lives of area farmers, ranchers, and residents. Grain handling, fertilizer, farm and ranch supplies, fuel, tire service, and the convenience store in Fairview. The Sooner Co-op is proud to serve Blaine, Major, and Kingfisher counties for almost 100 years and looks forward to 100 more. Sooner Co-op is proud of our kids, whether a whippet, jacket, or a raider. Find them online at SoonerCo-op.com. Wiggins Auctioneers is a full-service auction company well-versed in selling farm and ranch land, minerals, commercial and residential properties, as well as equipment, estate, and trust liquidations. In order to better serve our clients, Wiggins Realty offers conventional for sale listings as well as buyer representation. Whether buying or selling, auction or conventional, we want to be your trusted company. Wiggins Auctioneers, three generations strong and setting the standard since 1963. Little League Baseball and Softball are right around the corner. Are you looking for a one-stop shop for all your uniform and gear needs? Make one call to Snow Tree Ventures. Not only can they get all of your custom uniforms, but they have team slides and socks available too. Don't forget about team pictures. Yes, Snow Tree covers all the bases. Just make one call to Becky at Snow Tree Ventures, 405-204-8478. That's 405-204-8478. Eight four seven eight. So call today. Halftime at Stroud. Lomega leads Pittsburgh twenty-three to eighteen in our boys area championship game, and this is something that I'm kind of used to because Kevin Llewellyn jumps in here. Kevin and I. He's done some color with me on some former old radio broadcasts back in the day, and. But let's recap what happened to you earlier tonight as the Lady Raiders are going back to state. Final score, 70-38. to 38. And I'm going to say this, the game was closer than that, especially in the first half, as Pittsburgh really made you work for this one, especially in the first 16 minutes. Yeah, uh, and we knew they would. Pittsburgh's a really athletic group. Uh, they can get up and down a lot, uh, shoot the basketball pretty well from the outside. Uh, 23, the Graham, one of the Graham twins had a really, really good first half, really good uh, first quarter in particular. But uh, we missed a lot of easy ones, too, in the first half. And then I, I told him at halftime, we'll just go, you know, have a good third quarter and kind of stretch it out a little bit. I figured he'd pull his, and then we'd it'd be all right. Yeah, we talked about this early in that third quarter. What kind of adjustments are you going to make? Because you saw that first half, and you come out in the third quarter, and you did. You had the, what, 24-10 to 10 run in the third quarter to extend that lead. 
And uh, tell me a little bit about who you thought played well for you tonight and, uh, and as you get ready for a, a trip to state and a chance to play at the big house on Tuesday. Well, I thought Hensley Eaton had a really, yeah. really good game tonight. Uh, I can see there on your sheet she had 18. Uh, didn't miss many shots. Played really good defensively. Uh, Emma Duffy, who you're fixing to talk to here in a minute, uh, she on a, on a bad wheel uh, tonight a little bit. She stepped up big time in the third quarter, made some shots. She got really good looks in the first half. They just didn't quite fall. Um, she's going to keep shooting, and I, I knew she'd start making them. So I know that you talk about Hensley Eaton. She is somebody who just, when there is a big game, when there's a game on the line, she puts up big numbers. Yep, no doubt. No doubt. Been that way her whole life, ever since she was in fifth grade. How tough is it to, you know, you're in a situation, the tradition at Lomega is what it is, and uh, and you end up winning by an average of 51 points a game all season long. When you get into a game where a team is giving you a game in the first half, and it doesn't happen much, it looks like it happened the other night against Wibbers Falls as well, but, uh, uh, you know, how do you get the girls focused and, and in when you do have to play a tough game? You know, the good thing about this group is this year, we like you said, we haven't had a lot of tough games. I think we're averaging the most points of any team, girls team, for – 86 a game? Yeah, ever, you know. Um, but they've been in tough games before in in their careers, you know, yeah. last year at the yeah. state tournament and last year in some regular season games and stuff like that. And a few this game this year where we've had to play some good first halves. Um, they're, they're gamers. I mean, yeah. th they would rather be in a good game every yeah. night. I mean, they really would. People think I'm crazy, but we tried to play some bigger schools this year when we had some schools cancel and we just couldn't get them to – you know, to get in some big games, yeah. and and we just didn't get them to work yeah. out for us. In this year of COVID, you've got to feel pretty darn good about oh. keeping the tradition going. Yes, it's outstanding. Uh, you know, people don't understand what these girls and, and boys, everybody that's playing high school basketball right now, what they have gone through this year, you know, just – having to worry about so much stuff, not getting to do their normal stuff, not getting to go out, not getting, you know, going home. And I, it's a testament to our kids. Our kids have gone home and have stayed there so we can play basketball. I mean, they don't go out and hang out and do all yeah. that, you know. I mean, they're, we, we've got one goal, and that's to, that's to win, the, win the state championship again, you know, and they've sacrificed a lot for that. And I would imagine this gold ball would, might be a little more special than some of the ones you've had in the past after this. You know, it might be. I mean, this is this is as good a group. I don't like to compare teams, you know, and that kind of stuff. But this is as good a group as, as I've had. A fun group to coach. Don't care about who scores the points and who gets all the accolades and all that kind of stuff, you know. There's a, six or seven of them on there. They get 20 in any night. That's not the first time I've heard you say this about this may be your your best team, and that's saying a lot with what you've had the past 15 years. It is. It is, and that's why, I mean, I'm not going to come out and say this is the best one, I've, but they're right up there with them. I mean, they're right there, you know, with a couple of those other ones that I've coached. Uh, they, they can just do so many things offensively, and then their length defensively yeah. makes us hard to score on. Tell me what you think about Emma Duffy before we put the headphones on her and make her talk a little basketball with us. Well, uh, I've got three more games with her, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss this one a lot whenever she graduates. So uh, maybe maybe three more and and get her another ring and she you can get you. out of there. You betcha. Go coach, your, go coach the boys. Go Thank help you. The, go help Thank Justin. You. We'll take a break and come back. Second half coming up, and we're going to be joined by Emma Duffy. She's going to do a little color commentary with us. As we continue after this, 23-18, Lomega leading Pittsburgh. You're listening to Playoff Basketball on Scordo, brought to you by High Plains Insurance. Myers Real Property offers an array of services to our great customers throughout central Oklahoma. Fill up with fuel or diesel, grab a snack, and choose from our wide selection of drinks at our four convenience store locations. Jacket Express in Kingfisher, Warrior Express in Okarchi, Whippet Express in Okeen, and Tiger Stop in Tuttle. We also feature Cowboy Express Fuel in Kingfisher and Tuttle, as we provide fuel handling services for farmers, oil field sites, convenience stores, and more. Don't forget about One Day Cleaners in Kingfisher, where we not only offer laundry and dry cleaning for clothing and household items, but we can handle alterations needs as well. That's Myers Real Property, a proud supporter of high school athletics in your hometown. Our middle daughter actually has a heart defect, and uh, we didn't find that out until we found out um, when she was about 12 she had a genetic disorder. She has two right coronary arteries and no left. Luckily to this day she hasn't had any symptoms, but you know there's always that chance that something will happen, um, and it's, it's kind of scary. 
she has to visit the cardiologist every once in a while, more often than you and I definitely would, just to get CAT scans and MRIs to make sure everything is still going the way it's supposed to go. But every year when that happens, who knows what you're gonna find. I'm extremely excited about the All of Us Research Program. I wanted to participate not only because I wanted more cardiology research for my daughter and for our family, but also it's definitely a huge step in the right direction that we've been waiting for for a long time. Welcome back to Route 66 Coliseum in Stroud. Halftime, Lomega leading Pittsburgh 23-18. The way the first half played out, the couple of lead changes early on, and Pittsburgh put together a 8-0 run early in the game, led 9-4 at one point, but Lomega rolled back to make it a one-point game after eight minutes, 9-8, and then in the second quarter, Outscored Pittsburgh 15 to 9, lead 23 to 18 halfway through. Scoring in the ball game, first of all, for Pittsburgh. Cole Allen and Parker Horton with seven apiece, and Matthew Rice has four. For Lomega, they were led in the first half by Riley Lumpkin with six, Blake Snowden with five, Dylan Fisher, Noah Snowden, and Hector Rivera with four points apiece. And now we are joined by Emma Duffy, the senior on this. Lomega Lady Raider basketball team, first of all, congratulations, and I know you're right back where you want to be. Yes, definitely. Tell me a little bit about dealing with the fact that you got injured last week and you had that uncertainty and getting a chance to play this week, and how is your knee? Yeah, um, it's okay. It's definitely better. Um, we only have three games left, so kind of just push through it and play the best that I can. Tell me a little bit about what it's like to play for Coach Llewellyn and have the weight of the unbelievable Omega tradition on your back. I mean, you know, you've been out there, you've seen it, and what's it like to be a part of that? Um, it's really great. There's nowhere else that any of us would rather be, really. And we really just go out there and play, and we don't think about all that. And we just do what we do. I'm assuming you've been over there behind the bench cheering? Yes, definitely. All right, Omega has <laughs> the basketball as we start the third quarter, leading by five. He'll be out getting the start in the second half, has the ball right side. And he'll hand it off high right to Blake Snowden. Snowden advances, backs up the dribble, picks up now, looks for cutters. He'll work it to the post. Dylan Fisher will score. Dylan Fisher, his third field goal, he has six points. And Lomega opens up their biggest lead of the ball game at 25-18. Less than a minute into the third quarter. No, I'm not done with you yet. I just got to talk about the basketball game. There's something going on out there. Now she's trying to bail out on me. <laughs> no, Emma, you're going to hang around for a couple of minutes. I want to ask you real quick, as uh, driving the baseline is Cole Allen, saved inside, picked up by Carter Cross. The 15-foot jumper is up and good. That'll make it 25 to 20. I asked Coach about playing basketball during a pandemic, I'll ask you too. And I know my daughter, at Enid High, is a cheerleader. I know what she's gone through, including a couple weeks in quarantine. What's it been like to be a, have your senior year and the second half of your junior year in a pandemic? Yeah, it's definitely been weird, but we've just played through it, practiced through it, and we've just done what we had to do. We've had a few weeks of been quarantined, but really not that much. So I think we've got pretty lucky. And I know Coach mentioned during his interview the sacrifices you guys have made to keep playing basketball. Talk about some of the things you've had to do to keep playing basketball. Yeah, we just really, I mean, that's our number one goal and what we all want. So we just focus on, you know, wearing our mask, not being around a bunch of random people and just focusing on what we all want. Kind of the social life has taken kind yes. of a hit. Three in the corner for Cole Allen. He's in double figures with 10. And that is his third triple of the night. And now it's a two-point game, one possession at 25 to 23. And now a steal underneath. That is the third turnover for Lomega in the ball game. And they can answer. A two will tie it up. A three will give them the lead. 542 to play in the third quarter here in this area championship game. The Lomega Lady Raiders, they know they'll be at state next week at the big house. The boys are trying to punch their ticket there for the first time since 2012. Jumper in the lane, knocked down by Matthew Rice. He has six points. 
and we are now tied at 25. First time we've been tied since the first quarter, tied at four back then. Five minutes and 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. Tom Nelson joined by Emma Duffy, senior on the Omega Lady Raiders basketball team. 15-footer misses for Blake Snowden, and now Pittsburgh can come down, has a chance to, to take the lead. Talk about some of your teammates a little bit and who you really enjoy playing with. I'm sure all of them, but I'm sure you can single out a couple of them for me. Yeah, um, honestly, all of them. I love playing with them all the same. Um, I really love playing with Hensley. Every night she just comes out, and she comes up for us big when we need it. Um, Addie, I love playing with her. She's just really good. I just love playing with her. Darcy, Sydney, all of them. Abby can come off the bench and score a ton. Shelby comes out and plays really good defense. Anyone, I love playing with them all. Well, we've been sitting here talking. Pittsburgh has rolled off nine straight points to take a 27 to 23 lead. Now whistle will stop playing a foul underneath. All right, you got a few days off here. You get a chance to play at the big house on Tuesday. Something you're very, very familiar with. Talk about how that's kind of become your home away from home a little bit in the postseason. Yes, it has. Is it fun to play there in the big arena under the lights? Yes, I love it so much. And what do you plan on doing next year as the basket underneath by Riley Lumpkin? He has eight to tie the ball game up at 27, our third tie of the game. What's next for you? Um, I'm not really sure yet. Just kind of waiting and see how it plays out. Right. Enjoy it. Yes. You've got another week of high school basketball, and it yes. doesn't get any better than the big house. No, it does not. Emma, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm going to get you out here. That was painless, wasn't it? Thank you. Yes, Didn't it was. Didn't hurt a bit. <laughs> Didn't hurt a bit. Emma Duffy, the senior for the Omega Lady Raiders, as they're going back to the state tournament. And uh, we appreciate your time. Get back over there thank and cheer you. with your teammates. All right. And we'll let Adam get back to work. <laughs> Great job, Emma. It's been so much fun to watch her play over the past four years. Ball out front. Now we're going to have a timeout. Gives us a chance to take a break. 4-0-1 to play in the third quarter. Lobega and Pittsburgh are tied at 27. You're watching playoff basketball on Scordal. Brought to you by High Plains Insurance. The High Plains Insurance Agency takes pride in keeping up with many changes in the crop insurance industry and keeping their insurers informed of these changes. The goal is to help each farmer customize their crop insurance to meet their needs. Thanks for your continued business. And remember, call Amy, Carissa, or Danny at High Plains Insurance in Medford and Loyal at 580-395-2447 or toll free at 1-800-346-4056 for a quote today. Are you looking for a bank that provides excellent security and safety for your account information? Then Bank Central is made for you. When you use our website, bcna.com, you can pay bills, check account balances, download statements, and even manage your debit card. With our mobile app, you can do all that, plus make deposits as easily as taking a picture with your phone. Talk to a CSR at any of our five locations to find the products that work best for your banking needs. At Bank Central, we're centered on you. Member FDIC. It's interesting to see what team comes out hot to start the second half. In this case, it's been Pittsburgh. They've outscored Lomega 9-4 in the first four minutes of the third quarter. And they turned that five-point halftime deficit into what was a lead for a moment, but now we're tied at 27. Adam Dieselhorst back in here now as we start the back half of the third quarter. And Pittsburgh has the basketball, looking to grab that lead right back. In the corner, there's Colton Scott. Ball was stolen away by Riley Lumpkin, and then eventually picked up by Noah Snowden. That is seven turnovers for Pittsburgh. Lomega can grab the lead back that they have held for the bulk of the ball game. Emma's a talented basketball player, but she's also good on color. Exactly nice. right. Did a great job answering my questions. I thought it was hilarious. He thought, thought she was done after a couple of minutes because like, I started talking about the game again. It's like, I've got to multitask here. You don't, don't go anywhere. I still got more to talk to you about. <laughs> Riley Lumpkin out high left over the left wing, finding Fisher. Top of the key to Kelby Ott, who's getting a lot of playing time here in the second half. Right side, Riley Lumpkin, and I forgot to ask her about her boyfriend. What the heck was I thinking? <laughs> Noah Snowden, speaking of. Lomega back on top, 29-27. Is that confirmed or that could be Coach Llewellyn? He might have, he, yeah, he might have just been pulling somebody's leg. Steal back the other way, and it's a 
A quick run as Blake Snowden scores on the other end. Lomega now leads 31 to 27. Well, and you're going to see this in a game. You got two really evenly matched teams, and there's going to be runs as we've seen. You know, uh, Pittsburgh had that early run kind of. Lomega came back, took the lead. Pittsburgh comes back and ties it. See how Lomega, uh, you know, reacts to it. Two and a half to play, third quarter. Lomega by four. Pittsburgh have an answer here. Winner goes to state. Loser will come back and have a chance to go to state. Good defense. Turnover for Pittsburgh is their eighth. And a loser of this game will play Red Oak tomorrow. Left baseline jumper comes up empty for Noah Snowden. Two minutes to play in the third quarter. Two minutes. Here we go. Down the stretch in the third eight minutes. Matthew Rice. Chad Hutchison is watching tonight. Former Lomega teacher coach and all that. He's at Geronimo. Geronimo now. Yep. Left elbow baseline. No good. Actually, left baseline jump shot won't go. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching from Lomega and Fallen. They've got an incredible alumni base, incredible fan support. You know, it's uh, it's an impressive, you know, not only did we mention the girls, but, you know, they have a lot of great history on the boys' side, too, as well. There's a three for Cole Allen. He's got 13. That's his second triple here in the second half. Fourth, thir fourth third point, three-pointer made by Pittsburgh tonight. 31 to 30, our score. A minute to play in the third quarter. Oh, good defense. That ball was taken away, but it ends up in the hands of Noah Snowden underneath the Dylan Fisher for the layup. Dylan Fisher has eight, 33 to 30. Good ball game. Lots of intensity here. Three in the left corner. There's an answer. Back and forth. Carter Cross knocks down his first triple of the ball game. He has five points. And we are tied again at 33. Ott, right side to Lumpkin. Lumpkin driving, and he's fouled. 23 seconds to play in the third. Rice will pick up his second. Josh Nix, the freshman back in there for Pittsburgh. It's only team foul number two. Baseline right throw in. Out high to Kelby Ott. Left side of the wing to Dylan Fisher. Fisher to the baseline, cut off, leaves it left for Lumpkin for three. No good, and the rebound is cleared out of there by Matthew Rice. Seven seconds to play, third quarter right side. Cole Allen, the shot was blocked by Noah Snowden on the run out ahead to Noah. Gets up a three-pointer at the buzzer, which is short. Back and forth we go, Lomega and Pittsburgh. Nothing decided yet. We go to the fourth, tied at 33. And you're watching playoff basketball on Scordal, presented by High Plains Insurance. For generations, the FFA has been helping our children through agriculture to grow into responsible adults. We believe in and we support the work being done by our local FFA chapters and all they do to create an enriching experience for our youth. For all you do, you have our thanks. Farm Credit of Enid. Together, we grow. First Bank is a proud supporter of Okarchi Warrior Basketball. Visit us on the web at www.firstbankokarchi.com. Take us around the world with our internet banking, mobile banking, and debit cards. Everyone at First Bank wishes the boys and girls good luck. Member FDIC. Is your school or booster club looking for ways to fundraise? Let Downtown Threads create a custom website to showcase all your school apparel. You pick the design and the garment, we do the rest. We will handle all the payments and cut you one check when the website is closed. Call today, 580-237-7060. Downtown Threads, proudly supporting all local high school athletes. Pittsburgh trying to get the state for the first time in 19 years. Lomega trying to get the state for the first time in nine years. Nothing has been decided. We go to the fourth quarter. The Raiders and the Panthers are tied at 33. Pittsburgh basketball to start the fourth quarter. Underneath reverse layup up and in. 
That's Matthew Rice, the sophomore, coming to play as the moments get bigger. And Pittsburgh leads 35-33. to 33. This is going to be a fun fourth quarter, Tom. Really is. is. Worth tuning in for. Rivera out high left. Blake Snowden, top of the key to Dylan Fisher. Right side to Riley Lumpkin. Top of the key, Noah, spinning in the lane. Right-hander oh. gets lodged between the backboard and the rim. Should be a possession arrow, right, which go will go Lomega's to Lomega. Ball. Yes, it will be a possession arrow, which points toward Lomega, so the Raiders will keep it. That's and cool. Kelby Ott will hurry back into the ball game. Rivera will take a seat. Got some scores here real quick, Tom. We're starting to, start to get some in. Early Varnum leads big over Buffalo Valley, 16-5. to And Forgan's over Tyrone, 15-11. to On the inbound, Fisher comes up short. Got his own rebound, and he's fouled. Boy, free throws are going to be big. Neither team's been to the free throw line very much tonight. The foul on Josh Nix was his first. Lomega just 0 for 2, actually 0 for 4 at the free throw line, now 0 for 5. Well, and that's going to be uh, something that we're going to look back on as we always talk about these close games, turnovers and free throws, right, Tom? Exactly right. One for two, there's the first free throw make of the night for Lomega, they're now one of six. 35-34. Cole Allen, left side. Free throw line to Parker Horton, now back out high to Matthew Rice. Seven minutes to play here in Stroud, now a steal by Riley Lumpkin. Lumpkin to the cup, up and in. And Lomega grabs the lead back. Riley in double figures with 10. We've had four lead changes here in the second half. To the baseline, Allen loses the basketball. Riley Lumpkin comes up with it. Had a ball poked away from behind by Parker Horton. It will stay with Lomega. Lomega now pressing again, and it's sped up. Pittsburgh on the other end. That was just a really poor decision. Blake Snowden will inbound. Oh, he had him too. Got five seconds. Hope they'll get it in. Noah Snowden high right. Spinning at the free throw line. 14 footer with a hand in his face, no good. Offensive rebound, Fisher. Fisher's going back to the line. Fisher's been tough on the boards. Pittsburgh is not doing a very good job keeping him off the boards. Parker Horton picks up his first foul. Dylan Fisher is now one for three at the free throw line. That one falls through. Thirty-seven, thirty-five. That is That'll third. be the third foul on Noah. Noah Snowden picks up foul number three. Nobody really in any major foul trouble for either team. Noah Snowden has three. Nobody else has more than two. Need to remind people that are listening in this similar area that we'll be covering Okarchi tomorrow in Enid. Three-pointer misses in the corner. Back at the Stride Bank Center. Back home for us. Rivera with the right hand crawls off. Offensive rebound and the follow for Fisher. Dylan Fisher playing like a senior in the fourth quarter. Oh, he gets a steal. This press is bugging. This would be huge. Snowden for three. Snowden in double figures with 10. What a run by Lomega. They push their lead to 42 to 35. We'll take a break. Timeout. You're watching Playoff Basketball on Scoreto, presented by High Plains Insurance. Oklahoma Ag Transports would like to wish the Lomega Raiders and Lady Raiders and all of the athletes good luck in today's games. Everyone at Oklahoma Ag Transports love to support high school sports and are proud of the coaches and players and all of their hard work and dedication. Winning is always the goal, but participation is the key. Every individual is important, but team effort will bring success. 
Good luck to all of the athletes, especially the Lomega Raiders and Lady Raiders. Everybody at Oklahoma Ag Transports is behind you. Oklahoma Ag Transports would like to wish the Lomega Raiders and Lady Raiders and all fine. Oh. Come on, Ethan. Tom Nelson, Adam Dieselhorse with you from Route 66 Coliseum in Stroud, Lomega on a 9-0 run. Have opened up a seven-point lead, 42-35. Dylan Fisher has been a spark plug here on this little run. As he has scored four points in the quarter, but that was a big turnover he was able to steal last time. Empty trip, rebound cleared by Noah Snowden. He's smart if you're Lomega. That's a good call. He did carry it. Yeah, Noah turned it over. That's a situation there where you get the other team to turn the ball over. It's really important for you to be patient as you're coming up the floor. This pressure is bugging Pittsburgh. Right side, Matthew Rice. Back out high, Carter Cross, right to Rice. Good look, cross-court pass, finding Cole Allen. Allen to the baseline, 10-footer, rattles in oh, and out. Goodness. No good, offensive rebound, and the follow for Rice. He's in double figures with 10. I think he hurt his knee, unfortunately. 42-37. to 37. Did he go down awkwardly after the rebound of the make? I think he's okay. I think he's he went okay down kind of strange on his knee. Well, he's not putting any weight on that right knee. And that is a, that's a tough loss for them. They're going to help him off the floor. Cole Allen, 13 points, leading scorer for Pittsburgh tonight. And he is going to go over to the end of the bench and try to walk it off. He wants to get back into the ball game, but he is in serious pain. Five minutes to play, 42 to 37, Lomega. Winner goes to state, loser comes back and plays Red Oak tomorrow night. Riley Lumpkin out high. Snowden left side. Curling into the nice lane. Look, Bounce pass, little. but there's a pirate or a, a panther right there to pick it up. And that is Colton Scott. Matthew Rice in the half court, Rivera's on him. Shovels it over right side to Carter Cross. Bounce Good. past the lane, drop it underneath. Horton had a shot blocked underneath. Pittsburgh fans thought there was contact. It should have been a whistle. Three on the wing, Snowden. Rebound, Rivera. Rivera throws it away. Matthew Rice the other way for the layup. Rice with 12. One possession game, 42 to 39, four minutes to play. Now Pittsburgh comes out with a little bit of pressure too. Last Snowden, left side. Oh, shot was blocked out of bounds by Carter Cross. The Lomegas, they take that seven point lead and they have had three consecutive very poor possessions. You need to just be patient and move the ball against this uh, man defense and they'll get a shot. Underneath Fisher. Gathers, shoots up and in and a foul. Dylan Fisher again. Fisher has been the man, Tom. He's taking this game over. He has eight points in the quarter. Cole Allen's going to get back into the ball game. That's great to see. Great to see he walked it off. He was grimacing in pain after they carried him off the floor. Free throw no good. Look, he got it back. Offensive rebound. Snowden for three. That's huge. Oh, man. The lead is eight. 47-39. Three and a half to play. Parker Horton, can he answer no? Rebound to Noah Snowden. What a run for Lomega here in the fourth quarter. It is a 14 to six run. Just be smart if you're Lomega, take care of the ball, value the possession. You got an eight point lead with three minutes to go. We were tied at 33 at the end of the third quarter. Riley Lumpkin loses the basketball, picked got up by right Carter back. Cross and got it right back. Fisher stole it. Oh wow, Snowden's gonna take that three. 
Rebound pulled down by Carter Cross and a foul on the rebound. And you can tell Cole Allen being helped to his feet. He's in pain. And you can tell that uh, he looks over to the bench. He wants to stay in the game. He's trying to walk it off. And he'll be replaced by Josh Nix as he claps his hands in frustration and goes back to the bench. Under three to play. The lead is eight. And I tell you what, Coach Jim Jensen wants him to play it tomorrow at this point. If they don't win this ball game, they need him for tomorrow. Kickball. Now Snowden was going for the dagger that last possession. Uh, give him credit. You know, he's been kind of had the hot hand, but with an eight-point lead and 250 to go, might have been smart to kind of pull it back out and shorten the game. Rice out high right between the rings. Ethan, the shooter down there, shaking his head. Right side. Rice kicks it into the corner. The open three for Carter Cross. Offensive rebound for Parker Horton. Then it's taken away. By guess who? Dylan Fisher. How about his game tonight? We'll no. see if we can get Justin Edsel in here if Lomega can win this game. We'll ask him about Dylan Fisher. we we'll probably bring him in too, right? May have to. <laughs> Fallon Matthew Rice will be his third. Of course, we're glad to have you watching tonight on LomegaRaiders.tv, Scordle.com, and the Scordle app. Tomorrow, back to the Stride Bank Center tomorrow night as we'll try to see if the Okarchi Lady Warriors can punch their ticket to state after losing tonight. Inbound Riley Lumpkin. Offensive foul on Riley as he went right over the top of Josh Nix. He tried to sidestep him, but it was a good job by Nix there getting in position, and Lumpkin was out of control. Hector Rivera back into the ball game. Noah Snowden will take a seat with the three fouls. Lomega two minutes away from going back to state for the first time in nine years. Bad pass thrown away. Riley Lumpkin has it. Lumpkin for the layup up and in. That's a situation there where Cole Allen still has the bad knee. and he... Runner right side as Cole Allen gets back in there and scores. He's got 15. Kid is trying to gut it out. 49-41, timeout. Let's take a break. We're coming back. 147 to play. You're watching playoff basketball on Scordle. As a local member-owned electric cooperative, Cimarron Electric is committed to providing the highest quality of service at a reasonable price. We're dedicated to serving our member owners with integrity, accountability, innovation, and a commitment to community. For more information, call or visit our website. Cimarron Electric Cooperative, serving Northwest Oklahoma since 1936 and powering the needs of a new generation. Best part about the playoffs, Adam Dieselhorst, games like this. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. 147 to play. Lomega's opened up an eight-point lead. It's been much closer than that throughout the evening. And they've got the basketball coming out of the timeout. Ooh, not a good Inbound pass. is stolen away. Stepping in there and getting it was Colton Scott. Boom. Three on the right side, knocked down by Matthew Rice. Forty-nine, forty-four. We'll take a break. It's playoff basketball on Scordal, brought to you by High Plains Insurance. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. The Pittsburgh Panthers, they are taking this down to the wire. They're back within five. Huge three-pointer off the steal, knocked down by Matthew Rice. That was so big. 49-44. to 44. Tom Nelson, Adam Dieselhorst, 
producer engineer Ethan Sunkin, Bryce Miller, and Kate in the fortune bringing you the pictures. 141 to play. And Lomega will pick up, have to get it inbounds against the pressure. Inbound to Blake Snowden and right back to Dylan Fisher. Fisher passing across the timeline to Snowden. Left side, Noah Snowden has it. Noah to Ott, ball tipped away. Ott's able to reel it in. 1.23 to play, and Ott loses the basketball. Another turnover. Pittsburgh can get it back to within one possession here with 1.15 to play in the ball game. Down by five. Cross out high. Ball poked away into the backcourt. Riley Lumpkin diving for the basketball, but it's going to go back to Pittsburgh. Man, what a great hustle there. Man. Rivera's back into the ball game. Snowden takes a seat. You know, Lomega can be a little aggressive here with only four fouls, so I like what they're doing still with the pressure. Right side, Carter Cross. Off to Josh Nix. This is a situation where Pittsburgh really would like to have Allen in the game. Less than a minute to play. Three in the corner. In and out. Fight for the rebound underneath. Coming up with it. Up and in for Parker Horton. Parker Horton's in double figures with 11, 49, 46, a one possession ball game with 46 seconds to play. We'll take a break. It's playoff basketball on Scordal, presented by High Plains Insurance. Well, make it. Grellner Insurance and Okarchi cares about their customers, working with them to get the best price of insurance possible. For home and auto insurance, crop farm and livestock or commercial insurance, Grellner Insurance will deliver convenience and consistency. Let the Grellners make you a part of their family. See Missy, David, or Sam at Grellner Insurance Agency, 118 North Main, Suite B in Okarchi. Give them a call at 405-263-7676 or find them online at grellnerins.com. Proud to back the Warriors and Lady Warriors. The Lomega Raiders are trying to hang on. They lead Pittsburgh 49 to 46. 45 seconds to play in the ball game. A year ago, they made it here to this area winners bracket championship game and lost back to back nights to Payton and Hammond to miss getting to state. They would like to take tomorrow out of the equation. They would like to get it done tonight and know they're going to the big house next week well and you know this would be a game if you end up somehow not winning it'd be tough to recover from tomorrow I mean, losing that the, this game tonight's always tough but a game like this emotionally would be really tough on la mega loser takes on red oak winner goes to state fisher on the inbound got to get it in they do and there's all kinds of traffic underneath there riley lumpkin now they've got the numbers back the other way noah snowden Snowden in the lane to the basket, missed the shot. They're going to blow the whistle and call the foul, and Snowden will shoot two at the free throw line. Jim Jensen can't believe it. Noah Snowden will be at the line. The foul is the second on Josh Nix. Snowden's first trip to the line, he misses the first. This two for ten yeah. at the free throw line. Two for ten. This free throw is really big, obviously, for Omega because you keep the game still two possessions with 37 on the clock. Missed them both. Here come the Panthers. Cole Allen swings it out high to Rice for three in the tie. Missed it. Rebound is chased down. Not quite out of bounds. Back to Lomega, 25 seconds to play. You have got to give Cole Allen all kinds of credit. He's, out, he's going to come out of the ball game. They don't want him on the defensive end. They want him shooting. I mean, Lomega, if they don't pull this out, are going to be very disappointed from their foul shooting, free throw shooting. Well, it's going to be Matt, the foul that will send Blake Snowden back to the line. He's 0 for 4 at the line. He missed four back in the first half. The foul is the second on Colton Scott, and it's one and one. Snowden with 13. Free throw up and in. That's big. That makes it a two-possession game again. And they're three of 12 now from the free throw line. Is that correct? Three of 11. 
Oh, I thought they were three of 12 because he missed the second. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Now, now three of 13. Goodness gracious. 50 to 46, two possession game, 17 seconds to play. Good defense. Three left side, Carter Cross, got it! <laughs> Bang! Wow. 50 to 49, 9.1 seconds to play. Don't touch that dial, we're taking a break. It's playoff basketball and score -to brought to you by High Plains Insurance. Big Finish 2020 is on at Johnson's of Kingfisher. Hi, it's Jeff Johnson. Find a deal in December on remaining 2020 Ram 1500s at johnsonsofkingfisher.com. Like our new Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Caps. Thinking of a new truck? Then you owe yourself to experience the best and unequaled ride and control that Ram has to offer during the Big Finish event. Deals in December? See them at Johnson's of Kingfisher Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. A dealership you'll find only in a place like Kingfisher. Same name. Same family. Since, since 1927. 1927. Nine point one seconds to play, and what a gritty comeback by Pittsburgh! Hats off to them, man. It looked like they were dead in the water about a minute and a half ago. Lomega needs to get the ball in bounds first of all. Into Lumpkin. Five seconds to play. Five point seven to be precise, and free throws were coming. And this is a one-possession game. No matter what happens right here. Pittsburgh's going to have an opportunity. They're only down one. And these free throws are huge for a team that has struggled with the line tonight. That is the third foul on Josh Nix. Be interesting to see if Lomega goes the man here. Front end of a one and one. Got it. That's big. 51 49. 52 49. Good foul. It wasn't intentional. Foul in the backcourt will be team foul number five. They've got a couple to give. Smart fouling. Just milk that clock down, down to 4.8. Still got one more. If you go man here, I like him going man. I like that. Inbound to Matthew Rice. He's going to get a shot off the foul at half court. With 2.4 seconds to play now. Now up by three, you could foul him again and put him at the line for the one and one to save the three point. There's different kinds of coaching. They're not fouling. They're not fouling. Foul was on Blake Snowden, his second. 2.4 seconds to play, down three. Make him throw it in the backcourt if you can. The ball deflected out into the timeline. They got to get a shot off from beyond half court. It's blocked. It was blocked by Dylan Fisher. And Lomega is going to state. Dylan Fisher. For the first time since 2012, nine years ago, the Lomega Raiders are going to state. Justin Edsel gets to take a team to the big house at Lomega for the first time. We'll take a break. Our post game begins after this. 52 to 49, Lomega over Pittsburgh. The Panthers have a chance to come back tomorrow and get a chance to punch that ticket to state as they'll take on Red Oak. It's playoff basketball on Scordle, brought to you by High Plains Insurance. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help.
Lomega with the win over Pittsburgh. The final score 52 to 49. The Raiders are going to the state tournament with a record of 22 and 3. Omega with the win at 22 and 3 as they'll go to the state tournament. Pittsburgh comes back tomorrow and plays. Their record falls to 17 and 5. What an unbelievable ball game this was as it comes down to the final seconds and Lomega guts it out to get the victory. To go back and recap how it played out early on, a couple of lead changes and a tie, and Pittsburgh led 9 to 8 at the end of the first quarter. It was Lomega in that second quarter outscoring Pittsburgh. 15 to 9. They led by 5 halfway through 23 18 and led 25 18 early in the third quarter. Then Pittsburgh rolled off nine straight to grab the lead at 27 25. We were tied at 29 and then tied at 33 going into the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh scored the first basket of the fourth quarter to grab the 35 33 lead, but Lomega scored nine straight to grab a 42 35 lead. They pushed that lead at one point to 10 at 49 to 39. But after that, it was Pittsburgh who had the late run, got back within one at 50 to 49 and had the basketball late, but come up short, 52-49 the final. And what was just a tremendous ball game. Scoring in the contest, Pittsburgh was led by Matthew Rice and Cole Allen with 15 points of base. We sure hope that Cole Allen can come back tomorrow. He was injured, tried to play through it. And you sure hope for the Panthers fans that he gets a chance to come back and play. Parker Horton had 11 points. Carter Cross with eight for Pittsburgh. For Lomega, they were led tonight by Blake Snowden with 16. Dylan Fisher had 14 points. Riley Lumpkin with 12. Noah Snowden had six. And Hector Rivera with four points in the contest. Justin Edsel will join us real quick. And Justin, first of all, Congratulations. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, thank you. You know, the guys played great. I thought uh, Dylan was exceptional. It seemed like every time I needed something big, Dylan got it done. You're killing my narrative. That's exactly what I was going to say because every time down the stretch, big plays down the stretch, it was him making them. Definitely, definitely. You know, uh, I felt good having a senior senior group and, and Blake's a junior, but, you know, we played here last year, and so I think, I think that was kind of the difference. They got a really good team. They're a little bit young. They're going to be back, but they're they're tough. They play really great defense. They made it hard on us. Uh, just happy to get the win. I'm happy for these guys. I know it means a lot to them. You got to this spot a year ago, and you suffered that back-to-back -back losses. Yeah. You're that close to the state tournament, and you lose back-to-back -back games. And I know that you did not want to put yourself in that position again. No, definitely. No, and I thought we played. You know, really, we lost those two games last year, but those are our two. That's the best we played, two best games. We played good at the end. We felt confident in our group we had coming back this year and uh, just the difference of these guys making enough plays, you know, making enough plays. Well, this is a fun ball game to watch because it was a gritty ball game, you know, mm -hmm. both ways, both teams getting it. exactly what you would expect in this kind of a position. But, uh, you know, tell me down the stretch of that fourth quarter, you open up that lead, you led by double digits in the fourth quarter and let them crawl back into the ball game. What was the narrative of that fourth quarter? What were you looking at and thinking? Oh, I was nervous, of course, just like these guys. Uh, but I think uh, we missed some free throws and gave us some chances, and it seemed like uh, they'd get a big offensive rebound. Just We just made just enough plays. But, yeah, it was it was definitely nerve-wracking. It was not the way, way it was looking like it could go there for a while. You so. get the W. That's all that matters. Three of 13 at the line. Yeah. <laughs> we don't ever we don't ever talk about free throws, do we? Don't, we, don't even, we don't talk about free throws. We don't work on those. Congratulations. Now you get to sit back. You're either going to play, what, Tuesday or Wednesday, depending yeah. on how the schedule plays yes. out? Yep, that's correct. You're going to take these kids to the big house. I'm excited for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm excited. They're, uh, this will be uh, – We don't have to. you don't have to wear a tutu and paint your face that you're on the girls this year, Dylan. So that's <laughs> what we're, we're excited about. So. Congratulations. Right, I can't right, be – I mean, right, I've yep. been watching you since the Mulholland Orlando yep, days, and it's you. great to see you get thank to where you. you're going to get to. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we're going to get a chance to see talk to Dylan Fisher now because you're going to want to go back – you're going to want to go back and watch the video of this game on the Scortal Archive because 
you were the man in the second half of this ball game as you guys had to come from behind and when they kind of grabbed that lead early in the third quarter, the big play started happening and it seemed like you were in the middle of them. Talk about what you were thinking in that uh, second half. Uh, I had a lot going through my head. Uh, I was basically the main thing that our coach said, I mean, we had to be confident, use our legs when we were up at the free throw line. We struggled a little bit there tonight, but uh, just just trying to pull through at the end and finally get that W. I know we haven't went to state since like 2012 or 2013. 2012, nine years. Yeah, so it's been a while, and that's been a big dream growing up. It's just trying to get to the big house. So just finally being able to pull out at the end and get the W. You know, I can, I, I can tell you're shaking. I can yeah. tell that there's some emotion here because just for you guys to, to be, to go through what you've gone through, including like we talked about a year ago and getting here and losing twice and, and getting to this area winner's bracket championship game and finally getting it done. Talk about what this means for you and your teammates. Uh, I mean, this is just the big goal we had. I mean, we missed out last year. and I mean, we were really sad, but we knew we had another year coming up and we put in the, we put in the work on the off season and pushed almost every day and I mean I'm super proud of my, my teammates I mean Noah, Kelby, Hector, Lump, Blake I mean I'm super proud of all of them and I'm glad I'm glad that we were able to pull through at the end. We had a chance to talk to Emma Duffy at halftime of, of, of this ball game and, and I'm going to ask her the, ask you the same question I asked her getting to state what you guys have had to deal with you're a senior this year this year's been I'd say like none other except we had the second half of last year with the pandemic and all that and what you guys have, have gone through to get to where you are to, to here today. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was, There was a few changes we had to do. I mean, the summer we weren't able to, you know, have our summer camps and everything because of COVID, and we weren't able to get to the gym until, like, after uh, July. So, I mean, it was, a, it was a big change. And then most of our guys at the beginning play cross country, so we weren't yeah. able to get in the gym at the beginning. But finally, come October, we were finally to get in the gym, finally start putting in that work. And, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm a little stuttery. No, you're great. Um, you're great. I'm excited. Excited for our guys to finally get to go on Tuesday or Wednesday and make it. And, and uh, the girls, they get there all the time. Yeah. You get to join them this year. That's got to be great for you. At least I'm, I'm kind of glad that we're not cheering them on. I mean, we will cheer <laughs> them on. You'll cheer them. But we're not. We're going to be actually playing out there on the court first round this year. They, they get to cheer for you as well this year at State, <laughs> don't they? Feels good for once. So Thank you so much for coming by. Congratulations. I, I'm happy for you guys. been watching you guys play for 15 years, and I was broadcasting those games on the radio back in 2012, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. We'll take a break and come right back, and we'll put the wraps on this great night of basketball. Once again, your final score, Lomega. Moving on to state, both girls and boys. The boys win 52-49. to One more break and come back. It's playoff basketball and score presented by High Plains Insurance. Physical Therapy Central is proud to be keeping you in the game of life. Now with a convenient location in Kingfisher. Get back to the game of life faster with PT Central. For almost a century, Sooner Co-op has been at the heart of the communities they serve. In O'Keene, Fairview, Loyal, Hitchcock, and Homestead, Sooner Co-op has been a big part of the lives of area farmers, ranchers, and residents grain handling, fertilizer, farm and ranch supplies, fuel, tire service, and the convenience store in Fairview. The Sooner Co-op is proud to serve Blaine, Major, and Kingfisher counties for almost 100 years and looks forward to 100 more. Sooner Co-op is proud of our kids, whether a whippet, jacket, or a raider. Find them online at SoonerCo-op.com. Wiggins Auctioneers is a full-service auction company well-versed in selling farm and ranch land, minerals, commercial and residential properties, as well as equipment, estate, and trust liquidations. In order to better serve our clients, Wiggins Realty offers conventional for sale listings as well as buyer representation. Whether buying or selling, auction or conventional, we want to be your trusted company. Wiggins Auctioneers, three generations strong and setting the standard since 1963. Back at Stroud one last time, the Route 66 Coliseum. And it's a great night for the Lomega Raiders and Lady Raiders and Raider Nation out there in the windswept plains of western Kingfisher County as this year both the girls and the boys will go to state for the first time since 2012. 
And let's go ahead and, and tell you what happened here earlier today. The afternoon doubleheader, the consolation games. Weber's Falls girls knocked off Red Oak 37 to 25. And then the Red Oak boys beat Glencoe 50 to 39. So our two games tonight, the Lomega Lady Raiders knock off Pittsburgh 70 to 38. And the Lomega boys beat Pittsburgh 52 to 49. So tomorrow games that we will not be broadcasting, but tomorrow, 6 o'clock, the girls game for the second uh, state uh, ticket here in uh, Class B Area 2 will be Weber's Falls versus Pittsburgh. And then the boys game will be Red Oak versus Pittsburgh, which will be a uh, rematch of the regional championship game that was played on Tuesday. And that was a ball game won by Pittsburgh, 41 to 35. So they get that big upset over Red Oak, number five ranked team in the state. And now if they want to go to state, they've got to come back and do it again to punch their ticket to state tomorrow. And you really hope that Cole Allen, the kid who got injured in the second half, went down awkwardly and tried to fight through it. You really hope he gets a chance to uh, get some treatment and get a chance to be back tomorrow and get that opportunity. Let's go ahead and call it a night. Tomorrow we will be at the Stride Bank Center in Enid. We know we're going to have the Okarchi Lady Warriors. If they try to punch their ticket to state, that game will start at 6 o'clock. I'd like to thank the crew. Of course, Adam Dieselhorse by my side all evening long. Ethan Sunkin, our producer engineer, and our camera crew of Bryce Miller and Caden LaFortune, bringing you all the pictures, the sights and sounds from Stroud. Once again, it's a great night for the Lady Raiders and Raiders from Lomega as they're both going on to the state. They'll be playing in the big house next week. And you're watching Playoff Basketball on Scortle, presented by High Plains Insurance.